Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Dr. Ahmed Salim Fouad. I'm a professor of clinical oncology in Cairo University. Uh, I am a little bit expert in prostate cancer. Uh, today, I'll present a small uh, talk about the uh, uh, prostate cancer for the clinicians, uh, surgeons, uh, and uh, oncologists. Uh, prostate cancer uh, present uh, by what's called lower urinary tract symptoms or LATS, lower urinary tract symptoms or LATS. Uh, the, uh, the burning uh, micturition, the frequency, and uh, very rarely and the bleeding per uh, the hematuria, bleeding with the urine. These symptoms might overlap with the benign uh, uh, aging hyperplasia of the prostate and uh, any patient uh, should uh, differentiate with his uh, doctors uh, the lower urinary tract symptoms of the, the prostatic cancer or the hyperplasia. The tests of the PSA, biopsy and other uh, tests may differentiate uh, what's the likelihood of being prostatic cancer. You, we usually, uh, after diagnosis of the prostate cancer, uh, as evidenced by the PSA and the biopsy, transrectal biopsy, uh, we need to reach uh, the stage of the disease. We classify our uh, prostate cancer status into localized prostate cancer and disseminated prostate cancer. The localized prostate cancer is classified into the low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk according to the combination between the PSA the Gleason score of the pathology and the uh, infiltration of the tumor into the surrounding tissues. The low risk disease is usually uh, the PSA less than uh, 10, the Gleason score less than 7, and there is no infiltration to the capsule or the seminal vesicles, meaning this is T1 or T2. And the intermediate risk when the PSA uh, is uh, seven uh, uh, is more than ten, and the Gleason score is seven, and uh, there is still the uh, uh, T1. The still the disease is T1 or T2. The high risk uh, prostate cancer when the PSA is exceeding uh, twenty, and uh, and or the Gleason score is uh, above seven and or the T infiltration of the tumor into the capsule or the seminal vesicles. These classic, uh, three types of prostate cancer are very important to uh, choose for the treatment of the uh, disease because the low risk is usually not uh, uh, treated and because it's very uh, unlikely to uh, proceed and progress into fatal disease but should be kept under what's called active surveillance uh, to detect whether the disease will progress into other higher risk uh, status. Uh, on the other hand, intermediate risk and high risk uh, patient with localized prostate cancer should receive either radical prostatectomy or radical radiotherapy. The choice between the radical prostatectomy and radical radiotherapy is dependent on many uh, factors. The, this should be in discussion between the surgeon and the clinical oncologist. My message to my colleague, young colleague, that the hormonal treatment alone is not uh, allowed and is not recommended to treat localized prostate cancer, uh, uh, despite being a very important practice uh, uh, 20 years ago, but from now on, it's uh, contraindicated to give any hormonal uh, treatment, uh, whether uh, orchiectomy or LHROH agonist for localized prostate cancer because of the many uh, drawbacks. Uh, in the metastatic settings, uh, this is uh, treated usually by hormonal treatment, but uh, all in all, the, the, the prognosis in localized prostate cancer is uh, very good. It might reach 
70 to 90 uh, percent over year, um, overall survival within uh, 10 years and even the metastatic setting by control of hormonal treatment of others the survival is prolonged very much and uh, for sure we need much more time to uh, discuss the topic however this is a, a little bit a small presentation for the topic and thank you very much for listening this uh, video.